Hey everybody, it's live stream time again. Uh, welcome to the Table Ready live stream. Tonight we're going to be doing Red Dawn. Uh, I'm Harry from Fog of War. This guy Adam, over here is... Adam Dice of War. And down there, who we don't talk about, is... Hey, I'm Christian from Painting Panzers. Nice of you to make it this time. Yes, made it. <laughs> <laughs> we had to talk about British Paris without you last time. Oh man, I'm so frustrated I missed that one. And it was a good one too. I was watching bits and bits and pieces of it when I could, but um, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, we got to those slides and it's like, mm, Christian could do a lot more with this than we could. <laughs> no, you guys handled it well. I'm, I'm jealous I couldn't make that one. But I'm here, yep. Team Yankee. Who would have thought? Oh. So uh, we've got a couple of people in. So Spammerai, he's here, um, uh -huh. saying, yay that he made it. Uh, and Daz, don't know that I know Daz, but welcome along. And Kevin from uh, oh, Oregon, a Brit in Oregon. Uh -huh. I'm assuming nice. Panzer Paints is you, uh, Christian. No, it's not me. It's not oh, me. it's not you. It's another painting no. Panzer type person. Yeah, and he's a fellow subscriber, so shout out to to him. Oh. Awesome. Oh, well, that's uh, got a few people here at the moment. So today we are going to talk about uh, Red Dawn. Does anybody have anything they want to talk about that they've done on their channels or anything like that uh, before we get into that? Um, Adam? Oh, yeah, Adam. No, I'm all good. No. Christian, you put For out me. some videos. Yeah. For me, um, more so from a Team Yankee point of view, I'd like to know what people would like to see me paint because I'm completely new to this whole Team Yankee thing. So if anyone wants to see a particular video that perhaps isn't out there, then I'm open to it because, yeah, I don't have a Team Yankee army. I've got money for one, though. So let's um, let's get buying something. Oh, so we're popping Christian's uh, Team Yankee cherry. So, yeah, you guys <laughs> get into the comments. Uh, 414 Armed has just popped in to say good evening. Uh, so I had a couple of videos out this, this month, which is actually pretty good going for me at the moment. So uh, I did the Red Dawn preview one, which has done quite well. And we'll be looking at a lot of the same sort of stuff today. Um, and I did the uh, Land Mattress, the uh, British <laughs> rocket launcher, of which there were, I think... Sources can't agree whether they ended up with two or three batteries of them by the end of the war. But yeah, the first Canadian rocket battery. Uh, where we had some fun and games with copyright, um, Adam helped me find some really good footage to use for the historical part, and YouTube didn't like it. So, it was so good uh, that it got you in trouble. That was so absolutely. Good. But. I, I didn't want to let, uh, take it out, so, I mean, they would let me use the footage, they just wouldn't let me monetize the video, so it's yeah. like, it makes $2, just, you know, be yeah. happy. But yeah, the yeah. footage we'll is that. awesome. It's so yeah, worth the, it. Yeah. Seeing those things actually go off, yeah, uh, that was, yeah, that was, that was bizarre. But I love in the British organization chart, you can actually take two of those, so you can have two batteries of those supporting it. It would be stupid points-wise, I think they're... They are a lot of points. So 16 but... points for two for a whole battery or something? Yeah, so uh, if you had two batteries, that's 32, 32. points. But god damn, you could pound some people. Uh, it, 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 whatever it is would be suppressed. It would, it would be oh, suppressed. yeah. <laughs> and then repeat bombardment because I love... Yeah. The real thing takes 15 minutes to reload, but yeah. these things like you could fire again <laughs> next turn. That's, <laughs> you know... Anyway, so that's kind of what we've been doing on the hobby front. Uh, but there's been a real anticipation for um, for Red Dawn. Have you guys been seeing that online? Mm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot, of, um, a lot of... There always was a lot of hype, I think, for Red Dawn. I think it's the movie back in the nine, Was it 2009s? Uh, you mean 1984? I was saw it. it I saw it when it was released in cinemas. There you go. There you so go. It, and absolutely nobody watched the very forgettable uh, 2012 remake. Hey, I, I watched it. I didn't mind it. It wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't as good as the original, but it wasn't. 
that, that yeah, yeah, did it have people running around shouting Wolverines, Wolverines? <laughs> the original was much better, but yeah. Uh, you so guys are your age. I wasn't even born when the original it, came out. I was yeah, I, born. I was at university. <laughs> I remember watching it at the university film club. Uh, so yeah, I'm old, man. That's that's where all this white hair and no hair comes from. Oh dear. Anyway, so Spamurai is saying, other than suggesting doing the 1100th aircraft again, built some rebel helicopters. The same oh. scale as the battlefront helicopters. Oh, that's what I, I got. It. Anyone that plays French and you want to do a French airborne kind of list. Oh, was um, that the Pumas I saw online? Yeah, the Pumas. Um, you can get them on eBay from Argentina. The shipping's like maybe well, to Australia was about 30 bucks, but they're about $8 a kit. So, yeah, just for if for anyone that wants helicopters for the French Foreign Legion. <coughs> All right. What? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. All right. So let's actually get into it because, as usual, I've made far, far too many slides. Uh, so we're going to need some time to get through them. Where are we? There we go. How good are the new um, the new Soviet troops? I mean, I'm, whoever's painted them up has done an excellent job, but those blue berets, um, and the detail actually looks pretty good on the, um, on the on those plastic figures. I'm not a big fan of the plastic figures, but if I was ever to, to make an army of plastic guys, I think it would be these guys. Well, I actually will end up with an army of these guys because I really have to do some BMDs. Uh, we were toying around with buying the box sets and we managed to screw that up at the moment. So I haven't got a pre-order in. I'm going to have to do something else about that. Yeah, it's my fault. I did it. It's all your fault, Harry. They were available and then they were gone, man. I'm sure I'll get some one day. But anyway, um, so in case anybody doesn't know about it, though, so Red Dawn was quite a popular film, a Patrick Swayze film. Mm. Uh, directed by John Milius um, uh. in 1984 about the Soviets and the Cubans invading middle America, basically, and being shot up by high school kids <laughs> in pickup trucks and stuff. Um, so, yeah, the, this release is based around that. I have seen some kickback or some pushback online talking about the oh there's lots of other stuff they could have done like checkpoint charlie or bush wars and oh they've done like a movie <laughs> but i mean the whole point of this is you've got soviet airborne if you don't like the yeah. film idea just go look soviet airborne troops hooray yeah. there should be much yeah. rejoicing yeah no i think yeah oh, what are you, look i think bush wars would be really cool it'd be great to see that but um Oh, Checkpoint yeah. Charlie, man, I so want my plastic centurions. Yeah, and look, they're, they're coming. They've, they said that in that video with um, what do you call them? Breakthrough Assault the other day. So it, it'll yep. be coming. Um, Bush Wars would be epic. Yeah. I think that'd be pretty yeah. cool from oh, a non team Yankee point in, of view. Put, put me in for, um, for South African cool vehicles, <laughs> olifants and all sorts. Yep, be... and, yeah. That'd be a lot of fun. So we've got a question in, uh, the VDV are metal. Um, I don't know. I've heard. I'm just going to check. I think, I think they're plastic. I would have assumed they were thermoplastic, but I saw a theory online that the thermoplastic stuff is jammed up with making flames of war stuff at the moment. A theory online. Yes, a theory online. They've included a resin objective set in this kit as well i thought they were like getting rid of all them for all the flames of war um, box sets so it's all like purely plastic and then they've thrown a curveball with this team yankee one. i don't uh, know i reckon given given the price i think they're plastic but who knows yeah we'll find out uh so yes they could be thermoplastic or metal we actually don't know uh, and given that we just failed to order any, then um, we're not going to know for a bit longer, I'm afraid. Sorry, gang. Um, 
so let's move on then. So the first wave is going to include um, basically the box set and the book and the unit cards the same way that it normally does. Um, but it is based around the, the film, the Wolverine <laughs> film. So you're also going to get, as well as the VD or VDV, um, you're going to get pickup trucks and American militia uh, and irregular forces for the Americans, which will be a lot of fun. So just a question for somebody that hasn't watched the film. Um, I'm assuming the Americans win. No, the Russians win. What are you talking about? Yeah. Ah, right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you're going to have to see the film. <laughs> we're, we're not going to help you. Damn. Oh, uh, dear. But anyway, so what they've done with this for the Team Yankee timeline is they've linked it into the existing war in Europe. So basically it's a two-front attack into the US, uh, one from the top through Canada and then moving south through the mountains, and that's more conventional forces. Uh, so you're still going to be able to use all of the Russian and American stuff you've already got. And then there's this southern push, which is all paratroopers and Cuban uh, mechanized forces and that's pushing up through texas into new mexico and oklahoma through there um i'm just adding i think they're right Daz is saying that it might be the last metal infantry they ever make and then i looked on online somewhere else and it's saying there's metal in the in the starter set so i think they might be metal infantry which means i'm definitely buying the shit yeah it explains why they look <laughs> so cool yeah, that's why they look so cool, Harry. Metal. Oh, uh, wonk, wonk, wonk. Metal, metal, metal. Yeah, metal. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, let's talk about the uh, BMD Air Assault Battalion box then, the one that I haven't been able to buy yet. Uh, so this is the starter box set. It's got a whole bunch of cool stuff that I wanted to review. So plastic kits that make either the BMD-1 or BMD-2. In case anybody doesn't know, the BMD is um, basically the air droppable, air portable infantry fighting vehicle. It's the, the airborne's version of the, the BMP. Uh, what else do you get? The assault rifle team. So you can see them there with their uh, blue berets. Uh, so you get enough for nine rifle teams and six RPG teams. So as far as I can tell, that's two platoons worth. So that's quite a lot of infantry uh, in there. Three T-64 BV tanks. So notice they're BVs. And if you have a look, you can mm. actually see that it's the T-64, but with um, ERA armor. So as far as I can tell, Battlefront have done the same thing. It's the base T-64 kit. And then you get a sprue with lots of add-on armor bits that you can add on to it to make the BB. Oh, okay. Mm. The next one is interesting because I think, Christian, you mentioned something about Battlefront are going all plastic for their starter boxes. This one's resin and metal. The BTRZD 23mm AA vehicle is a resin hull with a resin and metal twin 23 uh, gun on top of it. An interesting so choice. It, yeah, it is an interesting choice. Middle is good. Middle is reliable. <laughs> Not so much uh, for the vehicles, dear. though. Not so much for the vehicles. I'm a plastic vehicle kind of guy. So Adam's even <laughs> getting his say in the uh, in the chat. All right. Yeah, he's, he's trying to get everyone involved now. Look. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you get uh, some more hind helicopters, uh, so when that b uh, box arrives, that'll bring me up to four, so I'll actually have enough to do something worthwhile with, if and when I have to build them. Crash and die when you try and actually land an assault. And yeah, that's... Assault company on an objective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boom, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, the Red Dawn BMD objective. So I'm assuming everybody's seen that one, so you actually get a special objective in the box. Uh, it's the one with the definitely not a well-known burger chain <laughs> logo on it. I've already got one. Well, I know you've already got one, but, you know, most other normal humans haven't. Um, yeah. 
you know the cool thing i think is the thing that you're going to bring up next is the uh exclusive exclusive alternate, alternate command team i don't know what that is i have yeah, no it's idea on that, yeah, it's on the box see on the box see that up there in the top of the box and it's got on oh, the circle. bottom corner oh okay that's that, that's the alternate command team so it's got a commissar with a with a um to match the film that was what i thought it might be yeah yeah, yeah. so that matches because i think there was the commissar the russian commander and the cuban yeah. guy in the film were the bad guy command team basically yeah bad guys. right okay so that's good uh, flight stands rule book yada yada all the bollocks uh including 16 unit cards oh look here we go i've got to put this one up here we go Hate metal, they're heavy, they clang together and are easy to chip. Daz, welcome to the stream. Thank you for coming along. Why don't you you'll be getting priority probably. access. Why, why, don't, why don't you store mini inches properly? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, yeah, although... I think, I think the plastic vehicles are excellent. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah, are. No. Anyway, well, let's, yeah, let's yeah, not yeah, refight that agree battle. About, agree about the metal <laughs> RPG 7s. It's like I had an RPG 7 and, whoop, and it fell off and yeah. Yeah, although, again, I like the plastic, but the plastic RPG-7s look. look like a flaming onion launcher. It's like <laughs> they're attacking us with garlic. What are they doing? Uh, so, no, no, no winners French, on that one. They didn't have French rocket launcher, man. Oh, so what? It shoots baguettes at people. Yeah. Anyway. So, after the first release wave, then we're going to start getting the platoon boxes. Uh, so that gets us to the BMD, which we can see here, which is made of plastic. Uh, and you can see it's, <laughs> it's actually going to be really easy to switch between um, the BMD-1 and BMD-2 because they're two completely separate turrets, if you have a look. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So as long as you paint both turrets to match the hull, you can just switch around yeah. switch them around there's no you can have a, common a different parts. set of guys that get ambushed on their way to an airport adam are you holding a pen no good <laughs> <laughs> and the thing that i'm really excited for as well is the uh, t64 bv um, i only actually found these pictures just the other day uh, and you can see it is the standard t64 uh, but you get a, sp a separate hull, which has got all the uh -huh. um, ERA built into the... Oh, sorry, a separate um, turret, yeah. which has the ERA blocks. Then you can glue some onto the side skirts and some onto the front of the hull, looks like. I heard the um, ERA works a lot better when you've actually got the explosive inside the, the ERA bit instead of just bits of cardboard, which was what was happening recently. What, somewhere that we're not going to mention so we're that we don't get demonetized? Yeah, we're not you. going to mention where that is. But, <laughs> don't, um, don't mention Zavor. Don't mention Zavor. Um, but, um, yeah, like they were rocking up and there was just like, it's supposed to have, you know, explosive reactive stuff in it. And, and don't, uh, it's, yeah. It's got cardboard eggshell stuff in it. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. which is less ballistically useful, I'm led to understand, little, but I'm no expert. Bit in that area good for crumple zones though so daz is saying these will be my first infantry but i've been wary i've heard all sorts about metal plastic and thermoplastic oh, yeah. the only ones i haven't built yet are much in the way of the thermoplastics I, um, I find them a pain to to de um to clean up yeah to clean up i find the thermoplastics a pain but if Can they're you... metal oh sorry no, sorry, Adam, didn't mean to interrupt. No, go ahead. Uh, oh, okay. sorry. Uh, didn't, um, uh, Harry, didn't you get the eight army? Weren't they eight thermo <coughs> plastic? Uh, no, the eight army were the flexible plastic, the thermo plastic. Ah, yes, Remember, okay. I did, I bought the big paratrip box set, the yeah, British did. Airborne box set, uh, which I have not opened yet. It's gone onto my review pile of shame. <laughs> I think, I think uh, the tacticals are resin. Yeah, I was going to get to that one next. They are definitely resin. Yeah, they're not plastic. Um, they're also all the same. So. Hmm. 
So Dropslit says thermoplastic takes paint great, but I agree they're a pain to clean up. So yeah, it's a bit yeah. of. I just yeah. find oh. them, I I try and use a sharp knife, and I always just take off too much, and there's this little dag that won't come off. And... Yeah, I always struggle. Like I'm using like a really sharp knife, same thing, and then I try and file it down, and it leaves all mm. the little mm. bits. And yeah, there's like, there's always some metal, dag that won't come off. Mm. Down nicely. <laughs> Go metal. All right. Go metal, yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, that's the so the platoon boxes will start coming out about two weeks after that. So that's like middle-ish of December. Oh, you've got me all geared up for for delicious metal infantry now. <laughs> uh, and well, there's even more resonant metal in your future because Ooh. two weeks Ooh. after that, you're going to start getting a look at these. Oh, ASU eighty-five assault guns. Yep. Uh, so, I mean, that's 1950s technology. Talk about yes. Checkpoint Charlie and yeah. all of that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, if again, if anybody uh, isn't old enough to remember the 1950s, that was basically a 85mm um, anti-tank gun uh, on a modified PT-76 chassis, a uh, light tank chassis, and that was... That was airdroppable once they'd figured out how to put the multiple parachutes and the rocket brakes <laughs> on airdropping stuff. Before that, it just ploughed into the ground in a great big hole. Uh, so it is technically airdroppable, <clears throat> even though it's pretty well, big. you can drop it. It's like... It's, it's That's like true. Seen, Any piece I've, of equipment can be dropped once. <laughs> I've, seen once. A, I've seen a couple of videos of the US and they're uh, pushing Jeeps or Humvees out the back of uh, Hercules for an yep. airdrop and, yeah, parachutes failure to deploy and, yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Like uh, so, so. Yeah. <laughs> God, what was it? There was something they actually airdropped with people inside. I can't remember what piece of equipment it is, but it was meant to be the, you hit the ground and you're ready to go. Oh, really? I I wouldn't do that. I really wouldn't. Yeah. I remember in World War Two they, they added extra armor plates to vehicles without telling the glider pilots, and, yeah, that didn't end up well either. No, no. Mm. Uh, so the BTRD, in case anybody hasn't seen that, uh, it's basically the BTR1 chassis lengthened and used as a general purpose carrier. Uh, so in this case, the box set allows you to put uh, a twin barrel 23mm AA gun on the top. Mm -hmm. And I love it. It's the ground mount, like there's wheels on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, you just and go. they just stick it on and bolt it down and go, there you go, AA vehicle. <laughs> you know, none of this spending millions of dollars on something that yeah. targets toilet fans. But, um, yeah, there you go. I was actually watching people in the place we're not allowed to talk about using that um, that same self-propelled AA system on, uh, on people. That was pretty yeah. interesting. The rate of fire, I thought it would be faster, but um, it was kind of, it was like, tool, 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 tool. I thought it would be mm. like faster, but yeah. You wouldn't want it to be too much faster because you'd, you'd empty the magazines too quickly. Yeah, I just I just assumed it would be faster, but yeah. Yeah, mm. no, fair enough. Uh, so that platoon, you can also use, use it as transport. So it comes with a PK machine gun or an AGS-17 grenade launcher. Uh, and missiles. basically you can just pack some guys in the back or as an anti-tank missile launcher. Uh, don't quote me, I don't remember if it was the AT-4 or the AT-5, which I'll is the slightly longer you. range version. I'll find out and I'll get back to you. Okay. But I mean, that's a really versatile box. That looks pretty cool. Yeah, and it's again, interesting. I'm going to build one of the anti-tank missile carrier sets, so I'm going to have all of those which means I'm then going to have all those 23 mil ground mounts that I can use as objectives or, mm -hmm. you know, do some fun stuff with, sort people's helicopters out with. Uh, and then the Nonna, just like oh, Nonna no. used to make. Oh, no. uh, the anti-tank platoon has the AT-5 spandrels. So they are AT5s, the longer range version. So, yeah, 48-inch uh, AT21 guided heat 
three plus five power. Rate of fire one. Cool. So that's good. So that'll be well, oh, rate of fire one, but I mean it's it's an anti tank thing sticking out of a hatch on the side of a general purpose carrier. They're a point thing. they're a point they're a point H. So Yeah. It's like a Malan that moves. Apparently we also have new adult dating chat free turning up oh, in the chat. Hi there, girls. <laughs> We've made it. <laughs> we have. If you start getting hacked by porn guys, you must have really, really made yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> you must have clicked that link, boys. So don't click that link. Yeah. Okay, so the Nonna is something that people have been asking for for ages. That's the self-propelled uh, mortar that the Russians are very big on. So there's a towed version of this, there's a version on a BTR-80 chassis, and there's this one for the airborne mm. troops on the, um, on the BTRD chassis, basically. Um, which is a very cool mortar that fires from undercover, so um, you can fire it on the move. What do you mean fires from undercover? Uh, well, in the turret. Oh, right, okay. So, right. The, so you mean like it's not... Rule. I'm talking about like a rule like the what's the British one where you can be behind the hill and still shoot. Um, the British have the the anti tank missile system. I can't remember what it's called, but yeah, swing fire. That's it. Yes, yeah, no, swing fire is great for that. Yeah. Um, no, what it means is if you're getting shelled, you can still fire because the load is not exposed. Oh, so it's in a deal. It's in a vehicle, it's in a turret, closed turret, mm. um, and it's breech loaded. So you, like most mortars, you don't have to hang it and drop it down the tube. You actually breech load it and then fire oh. it. What about it's, it's, you can direct fire it? You can direct inches, fire it as well. 20 inches, <laughs> rate of fire one, AT20, two plus five power with brutal heat and slow firing and smoke. If you want to waste your time shooting a smoke bomb, <laughs> probably do that. But, um, yep. yeah. Uh, so Spamarai says that the non S is also used by non VDV forces. Um, so I was just about to ask if he means the same hull, but apparently he does. So that's cool. So the, the Sweet. BTRD Sweet. hull one yeah. can be used for, mm. for everybody. Right. What did, what did I put on the next slide? Oh, this. This is going to excite you guys with uh, airborne troops. So this is the, as well as the Soviets and the Cubans and all of this stuff, stuck in the middle of the book, there's the airborne assault rules. FJs and, and weasels. So does anybody want to take the lead on that one? Adam, did you have a good look at this? Yeah, so um, we've got the uh, four different helicopters. So we've got, is it the Mil-8? Is that the uh, the Russian one? The Mi-8? Mi-8, sorry. Um, we've got the Sea Knight for the US Marines. We've got the uh, Chinook. And we have the um, <clears throat> Sea Stallion for the West Germans. So um, And for the US yeah. Marines. And the U.S. Marines, as you as you pointed out. Mm. Um, so yeah, that's that all. That's really cool. Now, I think Harry, you said that on some of these, and I think you're right. Looking at those images, they're actually cardboard rotors on most of yeah. them, except for the. So the so, hip has the plastic rotors <clears> from <throat> the um, uh, blah, 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 hind kit. Uh, the other ones come with cardboard rotors. Mm. And there was a bit of consternation online, but to be honest, <coughs> I can see why. I mean, transporting the rotors is the hardest part of moving something like this around. If they Although fold having... up, though, if they fold up, if they fold up, like, straight, and, like, you know, you can put them in a mount, that will grow. I don't know if they do that. Because it looks I like... I don't think they do. Like they might, looks like they might be removable. I'm pretty Still sure you can take them off, which would be good for storage. Yeah. But is anyone going to say, these are made of resin and these are like big, these are medium helicopters. These are not small utility helicopters. These are big things. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I think 
in some cases one of these carries like 10 infantry stands or you know two weasel vehicles or mm -hmm. so yeah if, if you're carrying around four um hips mm. that that's a lot of resin to be chunked into a tournament somewhere in a bag <laughs> or I, storing I, somewhere in your house yeah look i wouldn't take them to a tournament just because i'd be worried about it getting damaged um i will buy the sea stallion definitely because for my west germans but um i can understand why like you know um sub command dante said he's not going to show that and that's cool um one thing i will say is that um these are from what i've told a limited run so they're not going to make any more after they make this run so if you do want to get them don't be uh don't procrastinate like harry when he's trying to order his bmd box set um i would get them if you do want them I'd yeah them fair enough like about. so that's something i can understand totally 100 percent agree that they're heavy and you know possibly easily damaged and hard to store but they are very yeah, very yeah. pretty though they are very pretty so yeah somebody so in the quite, comments is also saying that there are plastic alternatives for some of these but yeah I'm they're sure not readily make, available i'm sure if you're going to make with a 3d printer you could probably print your own something. But... Do these have any like um, armament, like a defensive fire at all? Because I know that obviously the Chinook would have an MG. I know they have the door, um, the rear gunner and the door gunner. Do they, ah. Is there any like defensive fire? Allow me to proceed forward to the next slide. Ah. Uh, so uh -huh. what you can see in the top corner there is the door guns rule. So there's a bunch of rules. Uh, actually, let me flip back a couple first. So I wanted to talk about this. There is actually an airborne assault mission pack. So there is actually a separate mm -hmm. pack that you can buy that comes with the helicopter unit cards. It comes with cardboard push-out versions of the helicopters. Mm -hmm. So if you have a look there, there are the uh, mm -hmm. you know Chinooks and Hips and all of that. Uh, and there are, are a bunch of airborne scenarios like if you're playing a proper airborne mission, there is a landing mm. zone that you have to land in mm. and then the, the other forces deploy around you or something like that. So they're all airborne-based missions yeah. and there are a bunch of special airborne rules. <coughs> so, yeah. yeah, so there's there's a few rules in the uh, in the actual Red Dawn book, but the Airborne Assault Pack replicates all of those, mm. gives you the unit cards and, and the, the cardboard cutouts. helicopters. It's yeah. pretty awesome say, that you get the resin helicopters because they brought out um, for flames, didn't they? The airborne, but it was the punched out card. So you had the horse glider and the wacko. Oh, yeah. yeah. But they didn't release the resin of that. So it's interesting that they've done the helicopters, but not the actual gliders, but they're using the same sort of format. Oh, I'd say it would have been cool so with a limited. So many people have been asking for them. I don't, I don't know how many people are. Because they did that run of the, 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 the German gliders. Hmm. And I reckon not many people brought them. But so what they've done is they've gone, we'll do a limited run. That's all we're ever going to make. So hmm. we'll kind of hype it up a bit, get someone to buy it. Um, someone dumb like me. Um, <laughs> and one of each. Yeah, one of them, for sure. One of them. And um, yeah, I think, but I was, I was just going to say, like Harry spoke about those mission packs. Um, yeah, they're really, really cool. They're lots of good little value, and especially if you've got like a good little gaming club or group of mates um, doing those missions and the mission packs, they're really cool. Something I hadn't kind of hadn't looked into until recently when I did um, British Bulge and had a look at the linked campaign missions that they had for the Battle of the Shell in the mm. British Bulge. Um, really, really cool, fun linked missions. If you guys can get together and and play them out, I reckon you'd have a blast. And I think you needed the D, they suggested, didn't need, they suggested buying the D-Day um, mission pack for that so you could use the beach map that they right. have in that, that beach map for your beach stuff. So, Fair enough. Yeah, but, um, yeah, and uh, Subcommando is saying that there's a possible alternative on eBay for a... What's that, AW101? AW101, so that's a, a medium lift chopper, about All that right, sort sure. of size, yeah. um, but more modern. Uh, made cool. by Tallery, apparently. 
So, mm-hmm. Adam, you, you do make a really interesting point about those missions and the link missions in the, the Bulge book because I did a poll for my Red Dawn video and yep. my viewers asked me to concentrate on new release kits and the timeline of releases. But since yeah. then, I've gone back and had a look, and there's some fun missions in there. So we might talk yeah. a little bit more about that yeah. um, as that comes up. Yeah. What do we got next? Okay, the VDV and Afghansi VDV Air Assault Company. So I, the VDV are the big thing in this for me. I don't care about high school people in Jeeps and that kind of stuff. <laughs> I, I want nice soviet troops in blue berets and that kind of stuff so this is where it's exciting for me plus if you have a look these guys are hit on four plus Mm. so soviet infantry who are hit on four plus Mm -hmm. yeah so their um their soft stats are pretty good too above courage morale rally skill that is the headquarter ones though so the, yeah, the actual yeah, yeah. platoon but ones won't be as good the, the but platoon, well the platoon ones will still be pretty good yeah so these are good guys but these are the afghansi the actual straight bog boring vdv um have are hit on three plus still so you do need to pay the extra points to get the afghansi uh and i don't know if you notice there there's a bunch of options so part of the Afghansi thing is Afghansi VDV commanders were more flexible in how they assigned stuff. So their PKM teams, their AGS-17 grenade launchers, their Gremlin AA missiles, there are, I think, rules in this where you can cross-attach those directly to a platoon and they become part of that platoon. So they're oh, organic okay. to the platoon. So it's like an so, yeah so you add them as options to your hq this is where you buy them but when you deploy on the table you can go well you take the pkm team yep to one of your uh, companies and they just go yep they're mine and then for all things like morale rolls and number of units still active they count for Mm. for that particular company from then on which is very cool and the standard guys don't get that So who else is inf- interested in the VDV? Because I'm definitely going to make a, a VDV force. Yeah, they look cool. Yeah, I think I'll... They, they have me in infantry, Harry. Oh, okay. Fair <laughs> enough. It's just the blue oh, grey, isn't it? That's I could make, I like, anything out of metal and you'd be really happy about it, wouldn't you? I, I, I've seen... Uh, have you guys didn't know about Eureka? The Aussie miniatures company. I bought a bunch of their stuff. They're really nice. Yeah. Well, they've got some late war Italian Folgor. Yeah. With the Samurai Bandolier. You know, you mm-hmm. know how they had the. Yep. I bought some of those. I bought enough of their modern Australians to make a whole new Australian force for Team Yankee. And then mm. I haven't had a chance to do anything with them. I promised them a mm. review and. I haven't done it yet. That's quite oh, embarrassing. I've I've got a video coming out on them within the next month. They're Australian Pacific models. They're awesome, but I'm using them as chindits for Burma because they look pretty much the same. So, so are they 15 mil or 28 mil? 15 mil. mil 15 mil. They're Aussies. Oh, they they look awesome. They've even got the Owen guns and stuff like that. So yeah, oh, awesome. be quiet, so man! You cost them. you're costing me money. Stop it. <laughs> It's quite cheap. Eureka are quite they, they cheap. Are. They are. Yeah. Mm. No, I I mean, I yeah. bought that entire team uh, thing to fill out a Team Yankee roster for Australians, and it was very comparable to buying mm. the, the Battlefront yeah. stuff. So, and the fact and the that quality you have the option of buying per miniature as well, opposed to per platoon, yeah. is, is awesome. So you buy what you need, not, you know. And excess. that was actually fun, just sitting there going through and picking out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I need three standing guys with uh, F-88 styres, and I need mm. a couple of guys with Minimis and a, a sniper. And uh, <laughs> I'm afraid thing... I bought the bomb disposal squad and stuff as well, because you have to. Of course. Mm. The, only, the only issue I have is I just it would be nice to add a little bit more variety in, um, in their poses. 
mm. just for some of them. But I mean, look, that's nitpicking. Like really, they're really nice quality figures. I think I've got some here. I don't know if you can see. That's the. Hang on, let me let me blow you up. All right. There you go. It's hard to see. It's yeah, see. It's a bit grimy, it is hard mate. to see, but they do appear to be metal figures. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they've they got, the, yeah, they got those awesome, um, those samurai bandoliers for the MA. They look awesome, and the knee pads, the knee pads for the, for the, for the, for the Folgor, for their, um, yeah, just they look great. They look great. And forewarned and forearmed is mentioning also that the modern Australians have Wishmasters and Aslabs in metal. What's that you can buy? Yeah, F88. Oh, the F88 Ostire. So oh, right, 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 they're right, armed right. with the, yeah. the upgraded styres. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh, and pads, yep. And they are metal figures. So, yeah. It's just the most happy. important thing. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, so, anybody else want to say anything more about VD? VD or VDV? Uh, th- that's my joke at the moment because when I was actually <laughs> doing the the slide for this, uh, it originally read VDV and Afghansi VD Air Assault Company, which is a very <laughs> different unit, <laughs> a very very different unit. Okay. They're working in the rear, those guys. They are. Yeah. Oh dear, I put this one in for you, Christian. So, this is the painting scheme for the VDV. Oh yeah. Yeah, seems pretty straightforward. That, Not that sure BF's, I agree with it. That yeah, BF's that's colors. straight out of the book. Yeah, no, is it is it is it the Vallejo colors or is it the they're Vallejo the, colors? Yeah. Oh, they are okay. Yeah, so Andrea Blue eight forty one will be uh, Vallejo seven zero eight four one. Yeah, I don't see um, that medium olive being correct. That's going to be way too bright. I'll no, 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 no. Yeah. The those those uniforms, the KLM something uniforms, were really bright green. Oh, really? What I disagree with is the buff. That's not buff. That's meant to be uh, green ochre oh. or right. something. That's how I'm going to paint mine because it's a green color. It's not a yellow color. Unless they've just got it to contrast, like um, on the figure. Like that's the only. Yeah, thing I possibly. Can think is it the 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 the, the, the um. The, the actual colour on that small scale won't contrast enough, which is the only thing I can think of. But I haven't tried it yet either. So. Yeah, well, when we get some of the figures, we can try it out. Mm. Uh, what is cute, though, is if you look down in the bottom corner, what they say is if you already have uh, Soviet infantry, mm-hmm. and, I mean, I still have two boxes of uh, one of metal and one of plastic infantry, oh, Soviet infantry that I haven't Soviet. used. Hey, if you want them, they're spare. Um, he doesn't you can need actually, anymore. He doesn't need any more, okay. You can actually <laughs> turn your existing guys into VDV by giving them blue shoulder tabs and collar tabs. Oh. What's so, the, is that CA? What's that stand for? Does anyone know Russians? Nope. No idea. No. Is that uh, a so, yeah. Soviet... Like World War Two helmet that that, that chap's wearing. Hey, still works. It worked. In yeah, World that's War II, right. It <laughs> there are like warehouses full of those things, man. Yeah. Sh- throw still, this crap they're away. Still, they're still you never know when you might need a T sixty two or something like that. Yeah, that's true. When if you need to refurbish them, maybe yeah. Yeah. T fifty five. Oh dear. So anyway, for anybody who is into the American Irregular Forces out of the book, uh, we've got the Militia Group. I so love how the leader's got a mullet. That's, that's, that's just, that's peak 80s. That's awesome. Oh yeah, man. This is like, the 1980s mullet. were exactly like Bandana. this. This it is was, what we yeah. did every weekend. Yeah. <laughs> Run around with your AK. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mm, I'll begin. I I'm remember doing bog there. laps around Perth in the back of my cousin's ute, though, all hanging out and doing weird stuff <laughs> like that. So, you know, <laughs> the driving around in pickup truck stuff um, was real in the 1980s. So, yeah, interestingly, so the idea with the irregular forces is that they're add-ons to your American regulars. 
So if you're playing a 100 point game, you cannot make 100 points of militia. It doesn't happen. Oh, so it's it's <laughs> like, is it a... Could you imagine? Yeah, okay. That'd be awesome. Is that the you resistance can... rule? Uh, no, it's on the organization chart. Oh, there are only no. two two slots for militia groups, so you can add up to two militia groups oh. as support to an existing force. Um, oh, somebody said it. I've got to put it up. There we go. Wolverines. <laughs> Thanks, Seb. Somebody had to do it. I should probably watch it this weekend, I think. Cuban sled Sherman tanks. So does it work like um, these militia infantry would come in the trucks or are the trucks separate to the, the you, you have to buy the trucks uh, so they're extra points. So right, you can okay. add, the, add the pickup trucks for one point and then per you need truck. to spend it uh, one point. Oh, no, four for one point. Yeah, because uh, okay. they're not going to last long. They've got a five plus no. tank, so <laughs> yeah. hit on three plus. You'd be surprised. <laughs> You'd be surprised sometimes. <laughs> well, my so Australian anti tank Land Rovers always last longer than I expect them to, as well. So, yeah, no, that would be very cool. Uh, so, yeah, you have to add those on, and then you have to pay extra points to put a machine gun on the back of it as well. Right. I'm looking forward um, to seeing what paint schemes people put on their uh, trucks because I can imagine it can be, uh, you can have a lot of fun with it. Oh. You've got to have racing stripes. Yeah, to. I know, right? Hey, this was America in the 1980s. Some of them might still have wood panel sections on them. I think there should be more spotlights on them, really, to be proper 80s. I think that is true, actually. The... There should be a bar of spotties across the top. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. all right. Uh, blah, 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 blah. So they're not very expensive. They're only three or four points. Um, but they do get special rules, like the resistance rule, I remember reading it ages ago and I'm trying to remember what it was, but it was something like you do all the normal deployment with your forces and if you've got them in reserve or in. something, they come in in the enemy's area. So in the enemy's deployment zone, these guys yeah. suddenly appear yeah. in a bunch of trucks and drive around so and shoot people. They can't be held in reserve, but are not deployed on the table. Instead, each turn right. roll the, the reserves uh -huh. as part of the starting step. And you roll dice for each militia group on a five plus. You place them in the transport attachment as if from ambush, but in the enemy deployment area or no man's land. Uh, cannot move in the turn that it's placed and may not be placed within eight inches of an objective. But apart from that, um, yeah. And they don't count towards reserves. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I knew that, it, yeah, that was roughly the, roughly mm. the rules. So with the um, when you buy the blister, you get five stands of assault rifle militia teams, and two RPG seven teams, and a sixty mil mortar team. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, that's the uh, the Wolverines part. So again, the the US forces in this are all the regular US forces. So all yeah. the stuff from the the American book is still available. And that basically represents the regular forces of the con continental US, uh, the Marines and the National Guard, basically. I was wondering if there were going to be National Guard um, command cards or something for it. But interestingly, Battlefront didn't send us any unit cards or command cards. There is no the review copies. Team Yankee. All um, oh, right. Least, okay. Yeah. So which some people are happy about. I, I I think they actually add some cool stuff, but I know... Yeah, we've people. had that discussion before. Yeah. yeah. So how does it affect um, the Canadian players then? Because There's you no said Canadians. they come from the north as well, so is it just the standard... Um, Canadians can... just surrendered. That's it. <laughs> Ooh, you're just saying that because they're French speakers. Stop that. <laughs> We're an international thing. We'll, we'll talk to anybody. Uh... I think, so everybody is now muttering about Oil Wars or another Free Nations, an updated Free Nations book. Mm. Um, it so, would be fitting if you're saying the scenario is they attack from the north through Canada and down in Texas. So surely Canadians will get some, some more loving. 
on yeah, but there's but there's nothing in this book. So if no, there is okay. anything coming, it would be in the Free Nations book. Yeah. And if anybody from Battlefront is watching, please get the Australian cavalry um, <laughs> troop right, please, because <laughs> none of the configurations you list are anything like anything that was ever yeah. fielded. Looks like right. the Canadians tried to hold in Saskatchewan and Alberta, but got defeated. Oh. Yeah. Too bad. <laughs> what I think I think the other thing that you might see later is um, them fleshing out European sort of stuff too, other European nations. So. Well, That's talking about other nations, let's go to Cuba. So you get Cubans, which is very cool, and they can be you can take a formation of these and either have them as a support formation for your yeah. um, Afghan VD. Uh, or you could take these guys and have some uh, VD in in reserve. So, mm. yeah, uh, very Soviet, but very early Soviet. Very early Soviet. So none of these are upgraded T sixty twos or T fifty fives. They are straight yeah. Cold War. I'm actually as surprised they the got factory. The yeah. So it is very cut down. Uh, I have seen, as I think I was saying to you guys before the show, there's been some chat online that uh, the Cuban organization was actually slightly different. This is still pretty much based on the um, mm. Soviet and Warsaw Pact thing of up to yeah. three companies of 10 tanks plus a HQ tank kind of thing, yeah. uh, which if we have a look, T-62 Campania de Tanque. Uh, so yeah, front armor thirteen. Hey, that'll stop. Less armor than a king tiger. Maybe I don't know. But I mean, <laughs> really, ship. like you just have these as like things with guns, you know? Like it's there to, to take hits, and while you advance and flank something. Um, what I find really interesting is the bit underneath them, the SU one hundred companion to tanker. Oh, yeah, let me, uh, I'll just hide that comment. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so you can replace one of the tank companies with SU-100s, mm -hmm. which would be very, very cool. Uh, AT-17. Yep. Yeah. So, almost no armor. It's well, they got armor of, um, what's it, seven? Front armor seven, hit on threes, rate of fire one gun, moving, so slow firing. <laughs> yep. at one one shot AT seventeen two plus five power. So basically, hopefully you're hitting something that's not a tank. Otherwise, you're probably out like of like a pickup truck. Yeah, tactical, sure. <laughs> so Spamurai is never going to stop complaining about the lack of Shermans for Cuba. <laughs> Why don't you uh, just um, instead of SU one hundreds, just have Shermans and then just call them that? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, M4 same. Sherman Campagna de Tank. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> uh, dear. Was it nine points for ten? Yeah. Yeah. Bargain. Bargain. Oh, uh, dear. I would feel. There's, there's a lot of love for Cuban uh, M4 Shermans on here. That's, mm. I wasn't I just, expecting that. I just don't know what you're going to do with them. Like, they're just going to die. So that's the only thing you can, yeah. Like anything that sh literally shoots at them in Team Yankee is going to penetrate and is probably going to blow it up. Yeah, but Christian, yeah. have you actually played a game of Team Yankee? I played one game with using Corey's um, US Marines. I think it was. It was a fifty-point like intro game and right. uh, all the rules. That's why I'm staying really quiet because all of this is just like whew, straight over my head. I just looking at this like, oh, ten for nine points. That's cheap. But yeah. Horrible yeah. stats by the sounds of him. Yeah, think, but think, the think Renault, Renault early war tanks versus like King Tigers or something. I don't know. I'm just imagining like I don't know how many of these you can take for a hundred yeah, point uh, game. You, you're gonna have a whole table. You, your opponent won't even be able to put anything on the table because there'll be no room for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I play a, a guy who fields East Germans and I field British. So I put my three Challenger tanks down and then he unloaded his 41 T-55s, 
his 11 supporting uh, T-72Ms and then put down all his infantry and BMPs. <laughs> and we were playing it at a, uh, at a store and the guy looking at it, looking at my force and this guy's force and going, how does this game even work? <laughs> Somebody yeah. that we in our group as well. He's hasn't he got a Humvee swarm? So it's just yeah, all Humvees, so, nothing that's else. Dirty, that's dirty, uh, so it's just going to be a whole table of yeah. trucks against. But, yeah. yeah. But with that's Team Yankee, I, when I asked the question about had you played it before, it was sort of to give you some idea that what happens is it's like playing Flames of War. But you know, sometimes when you shoot at something and then it survives until the next turn. Yeah. That doesn't happen in Team Yankee. If you shoot it and you hit it, uh, you usually make a hole in it and that hole is usually fatal. So, right. you know, put it this way. I didn't lose that game where I had three challenges versus uh, more than 60 tanks. Wow. Because okay. yeah. it was just wrecks everywhere by the end of it. Yeah, so they basically they have to try and flank him, and then it's and his probably armor is pretty good. To even the only to... thing he managed to flank me with was a T55, yeah. and the only thing it could do was bail me. And then I rolled back in next turn, and then he bailed me again. And it was just like, as long as I don't fail my morale roll, there's nothing you can do to hurt me. Yeah, okay, but, but, yeah, anyway. What do we got next? Oh, yeah. So this is going back to the really good point you made, Adam, about the um, the scenarios. Because I hadn't looked at the scenarios at the book. I was looking at the cool new units and all of that sort of stuff. And then I went back when I was making the slides for this and had a look. And the scenarios in the back of the book are really cool. Mm. They're really, really small, so it's lots of really small forces. Um, and it looks like it to play out really quickly, really violently, but they're yeah. quite imaginatively put together. Yeah, it looks like a really fun little game. Like you've got that gas station yeah. ambush one, and what is it? What is it? T70, one T72 tank, two BRDM2 recon vehicles, six point game. Yeah. And then it versus militia, which is just the, the you know, five the militia infantry. Yeah. So, yeah, it's just a fun little, little, you know, fun little game. And they're all based around the different ambush scenarios from yep. the from the movie. So yeah, that yep. that worked out really well. And so that's something 11, that. 11 sorry. Points and eight points. Uh, just the points. It's like eleven points, eight yeah, points, they're, twelve they're points, tiny, eight points. Tiny, tiny. Yeah. Uh, scenarios, but they're they're much more imaginative than, yeah. you know, your deployment area on this side, their deployment area on that side. Mm. You know, everybody shoot away we go. No, much more much more interesting than that. So again, I hadn't paid enough attention to that. I think that that's actually Wait. I don't, I worth don't think, a look. I, I don't I don't think a lot of people do. To be honest, like. I hadn't actually started paying attention until recently. And then I'm like, hey, wait, this is really cool. This is, you know, so I think if you, yeah, if anyone's got a, a gaming group and instead of, you know, meeting up every every fortnight or month and just having a, a normal battle, um, try try the scenarios and try, and, you know, if you've got time, have one or two games. But I think that'd be really fun. Yeah. Mm. No, I, I think the those scenarios for that and the bulge british book are worth are worth a bit of a look painting panzers is saying he says he'll uh, avoid warsaw pact i'll retire by the time i finish painting your force you oh. do need to have fairly simple paint jobs yeah, um, yeah. i'm although, just going to avoid warsaw pact <laughs> forget that for a laugh yeah but i mean it's uh, so i play against ben and his stuff is all just beautifully painted though with that east german camouflage and it's it's really nice. Like on the table, it looks absolutely lovely. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But there is an awful lot of stuff that you have to paint. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, what do we got here? One does not simply finish painting a Warsaw Pact. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> There's always extra bits to add. 
I think when it, oh. I think about six months after Team Yankee being out or the Warsaw Pack being out, I remember saying to somebody, "Oh, I'd really like to paint these yeah, Germans." Yeah, and they're like, "You're not gonna, you're not gonna want to paint those." And I was no. like, oh, why not? And then he said, "Yeah, you've got like fifty vehicles you're gonna need to paint." It's like, no way. Then your infantry after that. Yeah. 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 Although at least they've got fairly simple uniforms. It's not like they're camouflage yeah. ones. I remember mm. painting my first set of Team Yankee infantry, which was the British four-color camouflage. I was like, oh, Jesus. Mm. <laughs> that, it looked okay by the end, but man. <clears throat> That's what I liked about West Germans. The Leopard 2s were, were very expensive. Mm. 16th and you got an army. Yeah, oh, that but... sounds good. And again, I had three challenges in my force that I played uh, against Ben with, and that's because that's all I could afford. You know, they were they were a support choice. I couldn't afford to take a um, an actual squadron of anything. So, right, Christian, so question, oh, sorry, yeah. question for you guys then, being Team Yankee players, what's the most um, underrated force? Do you think? Because I've heard that there's the French, there's the Dutch, Dutch. that's NATO, and Dutch and the and French. The you don't see a lot of Dutch and French players. Okay. Um, the French are hard to play because they got really good attacking stat skills, but once they start taking casualties, their morale's low. Um, not because they're running away with a white flag, whatever. <laughs> um, it's because of how they're they um, they they. They're a mobile warfare force, so they're supposed to be attacking and then breaking off. One, you know, take a few casualties and then go. Don't don't stand around for a slug out. Yeah. Um, I also think that with Team Yankee, the table size yeah. does a disservice to some nations. So, for example, we were talking about the game I played with Ben. So I deployed my guys within 12 inches of my side. He deployed his within 12 inches of his side. I think he had a scout unit, so he moved up another eight. So, you know, there's less than a foot and a half between us at the start of the game. British doctrine was to shoot at them over long range. As soon as they started getting within infect, uh, effective Soviet gunnery range, pull back to the next long distance set of positions and then shoot them on the way in like where the team yankee scenario starts the british is where the british would be leaving because yeah, they I cannot see. they cannot then use their long-range swing fire missiles their long-range gunnery all of that kind of stuff um so in that case yeah i get swarmed by east germans all the time because they start out closer than like by the time mm. that force got that close to my british two-thirds of it should already be wrecked Hmm. Right, okay. We yeah. used to play on a bigger table with me and my friends with Team Yankee. Um, and there was talk, I don't know, and it's hard to do because most events where you actually, like CanCon, for example, where you say, I need these tables, they're all six by four tables. So yeah. unless you're going to bring your own tables and supply like eight by six tables, um, yeah, it's hard to do that. Um, and yeah. So for one, for I'm in BrizCon two years ago, top two list for French. Yeah, they're, yep. they're a good fort. You just have to know what you're doing with them. So, And it's a bit yeah. like the Australians. The Australians can be very effective, just not the way I play them. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's that thing if you don't have any hard-hitting um, mm. anti-tank. So you've either got to be very, very careful mm. with your Milans or you have to manoeuvre enough for side shots. And again, with the Leopard 1s, they shouldn't be sitting still and duking it out. They need no, to be moving, good. pushing for a flank. Uh, and I'm, your, yeah. yeah, I'm I'm too defensive. I'll dig into a tree line and do some long-range gunnery. And if I'm doing mm. that, I should be playing British because mm. um, that was the British doctrine and that's what all their equipment is designed for. Yeah, Trek 1 said in the original Team Yankee timeline, the West German Army said green vehicles. That's true. Um, my first army was West German Leopard ones, and yeah, pretty much in in all green. Um, yeah, and that would yeah. be that weird West German uh, green olive color, wouldn't it? Yeah, olive green. Yep, 
SMS have mm. a good uh, a good selection of that for a nice Australian SMS paint company if you want to. <laughs> yeah. But um, <laughs> just yeah, to put in a quick plug there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you just got to keep you, if you're playing like the French with their um, Amex thirties or the the Leopard ones with the Canadians, the Australians or the West Germans. You've just got to keep moving. Use your because you've got a really good gun, but you've got no armor. So as soon as you get hit, yeah. you're going to die. So you're going to have to get around the flanks. Actually, one sacrifice. thing that one thing that nobody uses in Team Yankee is the hull down rule. I never see that being yeah. used enough. Find the crest of yeah. a hill, pull down behind it, and take the plus one cover. I used to like doing that if it had trees on it. So. Um, you yeah. get the same thing whether it's got trees or not. Yeah. Using hull down. Yeah. So but against, you, you get against, uh, 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 planes. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Fair enough. All right, gang. Um, so final thoughts on Red Dawn. Like wheels, there's been a lot of excitement for this and I must admit, I really want to buy it. Uh, like I'm, I am very sad. I am kicking myself that I waited too long to order a BMD box set at the moment um, mm. to get it in in the first wave. So I'm definitely going to make up some Afghansi VD. What about you guys? Joke doesn't um, get old, Harry. It doesn't get old at all. It's just fantastic. <laughs> I'm still like, I've got to decide what I want to do. I like Red Dawn. I like the box set that they've got for the Russians, but I think I'm going to go um, NATO, but I just don't know um, who yet. You could always do Canadians and Canadians then fight the, the top part of the story. Mm. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking. I, I don't know why I've just got a thing for Canadians and Team Yankee, so I might just go down that path and just see where it takes me. Mm. Yeah. All right. I think this is a very exciting release. The resin helicopters don't do it for me, but there'll be a lot of people who are very, very happy mm -hmm. with that. Um, what would be the one thing out of it that you're really looking to get at? Out of the Red Dawn release. If you could pick any one thing out of the book. I... I... I just really like the, the, the infantry, the new infantry look brilliant. Um, for me with that, with the box set, with that, with that limited edition command guys, I mean, I love, I love that stuff. I love that little, yep. you know, limited edition, not, not that it's limited edition, more the fact that it's an extra little bit above like that little, that little, you know, it's like the heroes that used to get in, in, in flames of war, you know, the, the extra, hero teams that had little guys, special guys, you know, guys that have won the VC or the Iron Cross or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's cool if they start doing that with the box sets. Um, I think that'd be really cool. And it, it, it's kind of, it's, it's fleshing, it's, it's, it's fleshing the range out, I guess. For me, that's the other exciting thing that it's adding all the little extra bits that people have been asking for, um, like in Nona, um, the, the, the airborne assault vehicles, the, the BDMs and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah. yeah Christian, was there anything? Because um, I, I know I must, you're not going to build a force, but... Yeah, I must say, like, I've, I'm really interested in the actual box set, the, the army box set. Oh, it's the yes. first one that's... I know we're talking about the book, but I don't really know too much about team yankee but i'll talk about when, all the releases yeah. oh, okay cool when the when i saw that army box set, i was like i want to get this and I, I don't even know i don't know anything about it i don't know anything about the russians in Cobra. it was the macro sign wasn't it? history it was maybe the sign. maybe the not macro sign please yeah. thank you very much i think i think the waka waka sign it just looked awesome you know i thought it did, it did. i'm like i yeah. want to get my hands on this so as a reviewer i looked at it and went Plastic T sixty fours with armor on, new BMDs, mm. the thing with twin AA guns on top, new infantry. Man, I just want this box set, this starter box. Mm. And I'm guessing, given I mean the damn things, they ran out of pre orders at the place we were looking at today, Blitz in Singapore. Mm. Um, just shows that there's a lot of other people who really think yeah. it looks pretty cool too. Yeah. Ones who are slightly more organized yeah. than than me. Yeah. 
Um, James M made a comment, um, Red Storm Rising, Iceland Operation. I've just been re-listening, reading, listening to um, Red Storm Rising, Red Storm Rising on Audible. And yeah, for me, that's that was my first sort of experience of um, World War, like Tom Clancy World War Three kind of. Yeah. And for me, like I, I never, I never, I've never read the Team Yankee book, so I know a lot of people grew up and read that, and that for them is the. Oh, I still have the original book. printing of it. Yeah, whereas for me it was Red Storm Rising. So yeah, that um, where the airborne the VDV took Iceland, Iceland, Red yep. Storm Rising. Um, yeah, you can recreate that. That'd be awesome too. So. Absolutely. So yeah, Droxlit said any speculation on what the next books would be. I mean, we were talking about for Team Yankee, it's probably going to be an updated Free Nations, and then there's a lot of people who want. Uh, oil wars updated to roll in things like SU seventeen, SU twenty two. Yeah, I think I think you'll it'll probably be fleshing out um, free nations. They might be adding in new nations. Um, Unscrewing up the Australians. <laughs> I don't know. You might have to lobby for that one. I'm not saying you're not right, but yeah, um, <laughs> they're hesitant to do that usually. Um, oh, I'm, all it is is the org chart for the cavalry. Yeah, they just yeah, need to okay. fix the org chart for the cavalry. What was that, Christian? I said, what about like Argentina with the Falklands? I know it's just a bit too soon. I know it's a little bit earlier than when this was based, but if we're including like Israel and all those other oil wars countries, surely we could. Uh, that was 1982, buddy. Yeah, what's when was this uh, Team Yankee for? 85. Yeah, but um, the Arab conflict, like Israel and all of that, I thought all those wars were prior to 85. Oh, no, that was 1956, 1967, 1973. Yeah, that's what, yeah, so that's, what, that's what I'm trying to get at. Wasn't the bulk of that before 1985? Yeah, but in the Team Yankee timeline, this is uh, well, different one that happens Arab after that. So it's not, right. it's not Fate of a Nation. So Fate of a Nation is the... Um, Arab, those sort yeah, of yeah. Arab-Israeli war type stuff. Syria, Oil yeah. wars is a Middle East conflict in the Team Yankee timeline. So right, in 1985, okay. so everything then, kicks right. off. Yeah, yeah. 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 Hmm. Um, oh my God, there's so many people saying Swedes, Norwegians, Finns, British, F4 yeah. Phantom for Iran... I mean, who, who doesn't want to see... An Spamarai SD? wants more nations with Shermans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah more Shermans, yeah. Uh, yeah, S-Tank for me, like, if they brought out a Sweden with an S-Tank... Oh, uh, yeah, plastic S-Tank. That would be uh, very cool. Uh, I'd just be like, yeah, okay, sorry, guys, I'm playing Sweden now. Like, yeah. Yeah. All but right, well, we... Neutral. Like, I don't know. They, they, even, they don't even want to join NATO. You'd have to have a scenario for them then, like why mm. they'd turn up. They have to be invaded. Yeah. Yeah. So they always have to automatically pick defend for yeah, a yeah, scenario so, that I, they... That works with the S-Tank, I guess. Fair yeah. enough. Oh, dear. Anyway, so we should probably wrap this up. But, I mean, yeah, I'm excited for Red Dawn, and I think a lot of other people yeah. are too. I think... Well, look, just from the point of view of BF and their release schedule, they're getting towards the end of Flames of War, as in, as in, you yeah. know, they're getting towards the Berlin period that they had in their, um, what they call it? You know, the, 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 the they release pathways. About. Yeah, the release pathway. So, you know, the other things they, they got to go is that they said that they would flash out is the Pacific. Which I'm really interested in, keen yes, for um, yeah. like Burma, Australia, and Pacific, Japanese, all that sort that of stuff. That would be fun. That would be cool. Are they actually um, going down that path? Oh, they are, just but I don't. The US they are. No, 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 no. They are. I just don't know when. There's no. There's no time for that. The yeah. def, they, they are doing it, but I don't know when. Um, Again, that's always the people who love it really love it, but it can't be a big seller for them. U.S. Well, Marines in the Pacific. Yeah, look, from what I've heard from, like, guys that I know that own big hobby stores, like, the fact that they've still got the Marines and the Japanese. 
on the shelves. Shops until recently, because you know, guys, is that it was kind of a niche thing. But then so was the Arabs rally. I think a lot of the stuff, you know, really what sells big for BF is late war. Yeah. That, that's, and King Tigers, basically. Yeah. King Tigers, <laughs> late war, Panthers, you know, Joe, Joe Panthers, all that sort of stuff. But um, they definitely want to do bush wars. Like Pete said, it's his hobby horse, and so that means it's going yeah. to be done. Um, and I... Yeah, who knows they what what they're going to do in the future. But based on what I'm saying is they're running out of Flames of War stuff um, and they haven't touched things like Oil Wars, Team Yankee for a while. And I think that they would be ramping up and focusing Surely on Surely Early War is going to get some love as well, right? It would have to because that's just... It's not a big seller. Like we did the Early War, one of our first podcasts was the Early War mm. thing and... It's a lot of fun, but I can't imagine it's a big seller. And as Spamurai is sure to put in the comments in a second, yeah. there just weren't any Shermans by then. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah so who, not, who cares? Who like cares? Said, There's the, no Shermans. Yeah, who cares? The Pacific wasn't, and a lot of people have got early war forces look, that are just look, waiting for a new book to be released. Lots of people like early war, mm. but but I think I because. When I, I had heard in that same one, on, was it Breakthrough Assault or was it um, Gaming for Advantage? They were talking about doing early war. Yeah, Modeling for Advantage, they're, they talked about yes, it. Modeling for Advantage. And they're going to be having things like a plastic Panzer II. <coughs> um, but there's just so many different things in early war. Like everybody had their favorite wind up tankette. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, there was a hundred million things that yeah. people thought in the 20s and 30s might be yeah. great that in the first week of the war turned out to be shit yeah. and never got used again. Yeah. So yeah. there will be an awful lot of things that they actually get. They are going to do it. They are going yeah. to do it. I just don't know when. And the thing is, too, it's not a big company. They've only oh, no, got... no, yeah. Yeah, no, the, but, but exactly. that's what I mean. People need to kind of, you know, they've got a couple of main games, rules writers, and then they've got some guys that help them and then you know that's that's it so it's just, they've got some play testers haven't they adam they do have some play testers yep <laughs> and some and proofreaders proofreaders and and article writers and things like that um so yeah it, it, it's all it's all in plans it's all going to get done unfortunately i mean they would love to do everything at once and I'm sure have a factory that just is mega super efficient and prints out all the models like a, you know, factory go brr, you know, just model, yep. model, model. but um, it just, it, it doesn't work like that. Like people get frustrated. I've had a lot of guys getting at me asking about, well, why is, why is this model been out of stock for so long? And, you know, and literally there's a, there's a production line and a queue of this models and, you know, as soon as they, if someone's, if they decide that for whatever reason that they have to push something out of the queue and make, you know, 50 more, 50,000 more boxes of T64 whatevers, then yeah. that up the whole queue and then, you know, stuff gets juggled around. So I'm, you know, I'm, yeah, it just takes time, unfortunately. It's a bit of a bummer. Well, collectively, right. between the three of us, we probably have put in enough money uh, into Battlefront that we should aim that money at creating another factory for them and we'll just volunteer yeah. in there as long as we get the free sure. new releases yeah, sure. yeah. hey I've, I volunteered to fly over to new zealand and help them set up a better um um live streamy thing because the three of them sitting with a wonky camera <laughs> with inadequate microphones and no lighting is just not doing it for me guys i'll fly there i'll help you we'll set it up <laughs> I'll bring yeah. some foam. We could put some foam on the walls. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, we are way over time again, as we always do, just because we actually have a ball doing this, don't we, guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, and a lot. chatting to the guys in the comments, we could do yeah. that forever too with, you know, yeah. people asking about what version of Sherman is going to be released Shut for the next thing or whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So anyway, we will wrap it up, but that's Red Dawn. Um, I will try and hide the disappointment that I'm not going to get hold of the the box set to be able to review some stuff for a little while yet, but I'd maybe better go we'll, and put some maybe, sort of order in. Maybe Chris, 
Chris, Chris will hear you. Maybe he will. Or Thank somebody. You. Dude, you don't have to send me a whole box set. Just send me one each of the new sprues, man. That's all I need to do a review. <laughs> or if anybody send, else wants to send me a sprue. Send me the middle infantry. Yeah. Send all three of this something, yeah? <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right, guys. I hope this has been useful for you. Uh, and we've had a great turnout. And there's been a lot of fun in the comments. It has been. Uh, so, yeah, thank you. And do we want to do another one of these before Christmas? Can we fit yeah. that in? Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll, have to, well, well I'm, I'm going away in January. Um, I'll be able to come in, but I don't know what the quality will be like so yeah we should definitely do one before christmas secret battlefront mission fair secret. enough <laughs> <laughs> all right guys uh thank you very much everyone for joining us and adam and christian thanks again and uh we will do another one before christmas it appears all right yeah thanks everybody good night Cheers. see you guys <laughs>